Hey, Bethel Church family, welcome to another uh, daily devotional we're calling Daily Hope uh, that our pastors are doing. Really excited about some of the um, some of the lessons and some of the devos that we've been hearing. Well, listen, I read a great, great article by Jim Dennison. It's a guy I read a lot, and he actually referenced a couple of ar- articles that were pointing to um, the loneliness and the isolation that's being caused by this virus that we are battling. And one of the stories was just a great story. It was about Joe Buck. If you're a sports person, you know that name, a legendary sports announcer. And what he's been doing during the shelter in place is he's offering his voice and his expertise to families who are making family videos. And so basically they send him a video and then Joe will narrate it and he'll literally make up a story about the video and a couple of fun uh, examples was uh, dogs chasing each other and then another one is chickens that are on a seesaw and uh, both of them are just uh, just really clever. Another article is from the Harvard Business Review and they did an interview with Dr. David Kessler. Dr. David Kessler, they called the world's foremost expert on grief. And uh, this was one of the most read articles ever in the Harvard uh, Business Review. And Dr. Kessler talked about uh, the number of different kinds of griefs, particularly right now, that people all over the world are experiencing. And he actually said that the world is collectively grieving right now. And I thought, you know, we need to tackle that subject because the Bible has a lot to say about grief and how we manage it. Now, Dr. Um, Dr. Kessler uh, had walked through the stages in the article. He walked through the stages of grief, which are helpful and they're helpful to understand. I want to review them real quickly. The, the denial stage, which uh, we say a lot early on, uh, the virus won't affect us. The anger stage, you're making me stay home and taking away my my activities. The bargaining stage, okay, if I social distance for two weeks, everything will be better, right? Uh, the sadness stage, I don't know when this will end. And then finally, the acceptance stage, this is happening and I have to figure out how to proceed. What caught my eye about the article was Dr. Kessler added a sixth stage and he calls it the meaning stage, the meaning stage or purpose, the purpose. And I quote him, I did not want to stop at acceptance when I experienced some personal grief, when I experienced some personal grief. I wanted meaning in those dark hours. And I do believe we find light in those times. Well, we do indeed, and the Bible talks a great deal about that. I mean, I think we all want meaning when we're facing things that we don't understand or things that just make us sad in life. And the Bible doesn't shy away from the tough stuff of life. And Jesus didn't either. In fact, <clears throat> just a couple of scriptures real quick about Jesus. Uh, one comes from Isaiah, who prophesied about coming Messiah 700 years before Jesus even arrived on earth. And this is one of the ways he described Jesus in Isaiah 53 and the first part of verse 3. He was despised and rejected, a man of sorrows, acquainted with deepest grief. Well, that's a powerful depiction. Uh, just before Jesus' betrayal and he would be crucified, this is what he told his disciples. This is what he, clo- he told his closest friends. Mark 14, verse 34. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. This is the Lord's words. He said to them, stay here and keep watch. In other words, pray with me. Be with me and pray with me. So here we have this picture of this gut level honesty about grief that Jesus himself experienced. Of course, because he experienced it, he can identify with our grief as well. And then finally, one more scripture out of the the writer of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 12, uh, verse one and in verse two, the latter part of verse one, and let us run with endurance the race that God has set before us. It's important to remember, God has still set a race for us to run before us. Verse two, we do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, discarding its shame because of the joy awaiting him. 
So interesting insights, and I will leave you this three quick takeaways on this whole idea of developing and, and, and really gaining meaning in times of grief. And there's three things we need to understand. First of all, grief is unavoidable. It's unavoidable. Um, <clears throat> sometimes we think that's a little too simple. Well, simple and simplistic aren't the same thing. Uh, one of the greatest hindrances to you and I uh, overcoming our grief or moving through our grief is either not admitting it or not recognizing it. And uh, I was sharing with one of my kids, we were having a conversation and I said, isn't it crazy how fast life can change? Well, it is crazy. Sometimes those changes are hard. Um, sometimes those, those changes bring grief. A second takeaway, grief is a process that takes time and it involves others. It takes time and it involves others. Jesus grieved. Jesus poured his heart out to the Father. But he also invited his close friends around him. And he invited them into that grief, into that time of grief. Allowing myself to do sadness both with God and with others is not always easy. I mean, it's like the one thing we don't want to do. But we need to do it. And it's essential if we're going to move forward in the face of grief. And finally, number three, and super important, grief finds meaning through gratitude and faith in God's promises. Tuck that one away. Grief finds meaning through gratitude and faith in God's promises. I love what Joe Buck is doing right now during the shelter in place. I love the fact that he is lending his expertise to families making home videos. Why is that so important? Not only is it comic relief, he's celebrating, he's helping them celebrate what they have. That's what they're doing. They're celebrating what they have. And it's in times like these that it's really easy to focus only on what we've lost and miss what is left. And that's a big one. What do you need to be grateful for today? Because we're called, we're commanded to be grateful. So that's something that we can choose to do. Hebrews 12, 2 says, it was the joy that was set before Jesus that helped him endure the horrific crucifixion. Too often in the Western Hemisphere, we try to make Earth heaven. But what happens along the way is a world war comes, or a terrorist attack, or a pandemic like we're experiencing right now. And it reminds us all over again, oh yeah, that's right, Earth is in heaven. Only God and his promises, particularly the promise of heaven, all of those promises are accessible through Jesus, all of them. And they have the capacity to bring perspective and to bring power to move through our grief in the face, uh, as we live in the face of this fallen world. And uh, it was true for Jesus, it's true for us. Grief is unavoidable. One day that will no longer be true, but today it's unavoidable. Uh, grief is process and it takes time and it takes others to talk and to pray through. And that's why it's so important to stay connected. I cannot encourage us, all of us enough, to stay connected. We can't do it in person, but we, but we can do it. And then finally, grief ultimately is overcome or you move through that grief by expressing gratitude. That's where the meaning comes. Expressing gratitude of, uh, for what we have and then having our faith in God, the one who loves us and proved his love, proved his love through his son. Thanks for tuning in today. God bless.